Can you combine different designs and elements with your embroidery machine? I'm gonna be answering that question. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. I've been doing some videos with the Brother PE800 Embroider Machine, and this is another question I've been getting a lot, which is, can you combine or add things if you wanna do a stitch out? So say you have two different elements, can you do it all on one item? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to be showing you two different ways you can accomplish this. One is on the machine itself, and the second method involves using embroidery software. So stay with me if that's something you want to learn about. Before we get into things, I just want to take care of a few housekeeping items. One, I am not a sewing machine tech. I've been getting messages or DMs like on Instagram asking for like one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting or help with your sewing or embroidery machine. And I just want to say right now, I'm not able to respond to those or really help with that type of one-on-one -on -one situation. So I'm gonna refer you guys to the Brother Support Center. Also, if you have a, if your machine is with a different maker, I would encourage you to either seek out a sewing machine tech that does that for a living or reach out to your manufacturer for help. But guys, I just am not able to respond to those types of inquiries. So thank you for understanding. And the other thing is, if you do have a specific question, check back through my playlist on the Brother P800 machine because I may have answered it. I've done a few Q and A's. So check that first before, because I may have already answered your question. There's a lot to love about the Brother PE800, but one of my favorite features is the color LCD touch screen. You can actually do quite a few things just on the machine itself. It comes with some built-in designs and fonts, and you can manipulate designs that you've imported combined with designs that are already in the machine if you want to do that. So the first method I'm going to show you right now is how to do it on the machine, which doesn't cost you anything extra. And here we are at the touchscreen display of the Brother PE800 Embroider Machine. I'm gonna walk you through a few things, explain some of the features of this machine, what you can and can't do, because it can be a little bit confusing. The machine has some built-in designs and they also have the ability to import designs using a USB stick, like those little thumb drives or flash drives. So you can see here are the built-in ones. You can choose what type of hoop you're using, the five by seven inch hoop, the four by four, which is what I was using. I'll change it to five by seven just because it gives us the most options. And then there's a little oval hoop as well. That could be used for like really small things like monograms, but it's not very big. So normally I usually use the five by seven hoop. The four by four inch hoop I'll use occasionally, but I mostly use five by seven. So you can use the arrows and then go to different designs so say I want to have this like cocktail drink or whatever. You can move this around. Now notice this is a stitch density function and you'll see it's grayed out quite a bit because I believe you can only change the density, I believe on the built-in fonts. So the fonts that come with mach the machine, we'll see if we can do that. So let's add a font and see what happens. I'll just do a random one. I'll just do like me, yeah. This is something I would really embroider. So let's add this. And so now you can see the stitch, stitch density, you can edit, but I, I believe you can only edit the density on the built-in font. So if you import fonts or letters or sayings that are outside of what comes with the machine, you can't change the stitch density. The reason you would change the stitch, stitch density is usually if you're enlarging or shrinking the design. So if you make the design smaller, you'd probably want to lower the stitch density. And if you make the design bigger, you probably want to increase it because as you enlarge anything, whatever stitches are built into the design are going to get also stretched out. So you won't have as nice of a fill. I'm going to move this font here. All right. And I believe you can like select different things. All right. So yeah, this, this isn't really a design I would do, but okay. So you can use the touch screen and then select what you want to select. You know, I can move this around. So that's how you can, have different things. Let me try to move this up. You can also, you can change the size, but I would warn you, don't try to drastically change the size because again, that affects your compensation, the pull, the stitch density. And if you enlarge or shrink the design too much, you might not get a very good stitch out because you've really essentially changed the design itself. So if I'm sizing something, I typically, will do very minimal stuff. Like maybe like one of these or one of these, but like not a whole lot. I will not do that very much. So just a warning. Also this uh, 
menu here. I think this changes the size of the, yeah, so this is medium, small, large, okay. So small, medium, large, okay, I'm gonna keep it on large. And then you can also add stuff that you've imported. So I can add, and then this guy right here, this little thing that looks like a squid or something, this means you wanna take something off your USB drive. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this is all the stuff I've got on the USB drive. So say I wanna put this, uh, or I'll just pick something kinda of rando. All right, this coffee cup here, all right. Set this, so now I've got this in play too. Obviously there's a lot going on here. Oh, cool, I didn't even realize you could do that. This is cool, so if you take your finger, you can drag this around. And I believe the design will stitch out in the order that you inserted things. So it would probably do the cocktail drink first, the me lettering font next, and then the coffee cup since that's the last thing I did. I have used this function before to do things like a saying or a word and then adding a design. I would say this is still a little bit like primitive for me. I really do prefer to use Embrilliance Essentials because you can get a lot more specific with things. Also, it's a little bit hard to see how things are gonna be on this like tiny screen. So that is, I would say a negative. I'm just trying to make things line up. I didn't even realize you could do this. So you can drag it with your finger. That's actually kind of cool. Let's say I want to do this coffee cup, me, and then cocktail drink. So obviously it only goes to the edge of the hoop, but again, you can see it's kind of small. I feel like I need a little bit more. Also like say I was gonna put this on top of the me, this stitching is gonna be, like in the parts where they overlap, it's gonna be super dense. And one thing I really like about Embrilliance Essentials is that it, whatever design is on top, it will actually automatically remove the bulk of the stuff on the bottom so you don't get super bulky stitching. Also, I've noticed when I'm doing anything like that where the, the needle is stitching over already stitched areas, that's when I tend to get things like thread breaks or run into issues. So that is a, a huge positive if you plan to overlap anything you technically can in here but if the coffee cup is on top and the me is underneath then you're gonna get like really really bulky stitching areas and again I do really like that within brilliance essentials you don't get that because you can automatically remove the bulk of the stuff that's behind so I think that's a really good intuitive feature is that that in brilliance offers I'm not a spokesperson for brilliance or anything I bought the software none of this is sponsored I'm just a customer but this is how you can incorporate multiple elements into one embroidery design so that's what you do another way you can do things and to be quite frank with you, I prefer this way now, is to use embroidery software. Now I've been using Embrilliance Essentials, and before that I used the free version of Embrilliance, which was pretty good for being free, but I also wanted to unlock the additional features. All right, so let me bring up the Embrilliance website here. This is the version of Embrilliance I have. It's called Embrilliance Essentials. Normally it's about $150 USD, and it had the basic features I want. Now I'm not doing digitizing or anything fancy like that. I'm doing basic stuff where I just wanna use font to create like a sentence or something, or I'm just using designs I purchased and I wanna try to maybe like arrange them, that sort of thing. So I think this version of the software would be right for you if you're in a similar situation. So you can see what it comes with and it, there is a Mac and a Windows version and it's just a downloadable program. So you don't have to wait to get anything in the mail and you can merge, size, colorize, or monogram. Now, this does not have a stitch density feature. So if you are trying to resize something, you really don't wanna do it too much because if you do it too much, your stitch density is gonna be off. So this version of the software, I don't believe has that feature. This is not something you can use to like take a three inch design and make it a nine inch design. It's not gonna work out very well, but if you're just keeping things the size they are or maybe tweaking it a little bit, this could work. Now you can see some of the different functions. This is cool, you can have like wrap around text. I believe this version did come with some more fonts. I believe something like that. And this allows you to combine designs and make a new design out of different elements. Let's go to the software itself. 
I just pulled up a blank project here. Now we're in the software itself. I just create a new project. And this operates like a lot of different programs where you create a file, you do whatever you need to do in it, and then you can save it in the file type you want. So you can save it as a working file. So that's the file that is like your project file. And then you can also save it as a stitch file. So you can actually save it, I believe, as different. OK, yeah, so it's got all of the common file types for different embroidery machine manufacturers. Now I use Brothers, so that's .pes. And I usually just have a folder on my computer where I save all of my embroidery designs. In the free version, there's a, there are quite a few differences between the free version and then the Essentials paid version. In the free version, I believe I could combine one of the designs that came with the program. So like I could take one of these shapes and I could combine it with font. Like I have some BX fonts that I've imported into here and you can combine those and save it, but you cannot combine external elements. So like, and this does have some built, like this is their only built-in font, but you cannot design a BX font that you imported with another design that you also imported. It's pretty limited as to what you can save if you are trying to get creative with it. Now, one thing you could do is you could take a BX font and I'll show you here and you can just type in your text. All right, let's just type out, hello. Hello, Jen, okay. Hello, Jen, and hit enter and that will turn that into your design here. And here's all my fonts that I've imported. Okay, that looks really weird. But you see what I'm getting at is you can use your BX fonts to create like a text design and you can save that with the free version. But with the paid version, you can save the text you create, plus you can import a design. So I'm going to pull up some of my rando designs that I've just purchased or whatever. And all you have to do is drag and drop it onto your project. All right, so here we go. So now I've got these uh, flip flops. OK. And you can actually isolate different elements and you can like delete things, you can move things around. So you can manipulate stuff a bit more in this paid version of the program. We're just gonna pretend we're, this is for real, this is not. All right, so, sorry, my stomach is also growling. I'm a little bit hungry, guys. So let's say I wanted to take these two designs and if you click in here, okay. And if I scroll like with my little scrolly wheel, it'll push in or push out. All right, and you have to click on the actual element to move it around, okay. So with this paid version of Embrilliance Essentials, I can save this as its own file now. So if I want to do that, I could do that. Now, another feature that I do really like, and I did walk you guys through it in my previous video talking about Embrilliance Essentials, is that if you are, say, doing different elements, oh my gosh, my stomach is really growling, and it overlaps. So let's say I've got this shell, and then I want to change like what order things stitch out on. So let's say I wanted to put this, okay, at the end, so the Hello Gen, I think would stitch out, I yes, yeah, so that would be on top of the shell then. Here's the deal. So because I've got these two designs and one is on top of the other one, if I just tried to stitch this out as is, you're gonna get a lot of bulk at every portion of the design where the stitching is stitching on top of other stitching. It's got this tool and you can actually remove the hidden stitches. Let's run the stitch simulator. And this is actually a really cool feature of the program. So you can really see what order everything's gonna stitch out in and how everything looks. All right, so you can see on the shell that the program took out stitching in areas where the Hello Gen would be over it. So this will cut down on the bulk of the design and also eliminate like that really awkward bulky section that would have happened had you not done this. All right, so you see, it's got those sections. So you see now there's just less stitching in the areas where the blue writing will be over top of it. So that's actually one of my favorite things about the program, to be honest with you. Although it didn't really do it much over here, but you know, hey, it's not perfect. It kind of 
like auto tries to figure it out. But overall, I mean, I think this is a really good program for the price. There are much pricier versions of embroidery software. That's when you start to get into digitizing and the really fancy stuff that I do not do. But when I have to do it, I am probably going to pay somebody. So this is how you can combine elements and various designs all in the same project file. So if I'm going to save this, I'm going to save it as a stitch and working file. So it saves it as both. I'm going to call this uh, Hello Jen Flip Flops Seashell. Okay, it's, I'm just like making that up pretty much. I'm going to save that and now it will show up in my embroidery designs folder right here. See, here we go. Oh, it actually, it accidentally saved it twice, but hey, it'll be all right. Okay, that will be the file. And then I've demonstrated this in previous videos, but at this point you would put this on your USB flash drive or thumb drive and then put it into the machine. I've showed you guys how to do this in previous videos, so check that out. And uh, it's pretty simple though. And I feel like this program is pretty user friendly overall. I haven't had too many issues where I'm like, what is going on here? And the company actually, I believe, has put out some tutorials on their own YouTube channel. So I will link their channel below as well, because I did actually find it pretty helpful. But so far, I am a happy customer with Embrilliance Essentials. I don't have any major complaints. So if this is in your budget and you want to get a little bit more into your embroider machine and trying to be able to customize things a little bit more, I think this would be a great option. I think this is a good, solid software. It's pretty easy to use and it's not ridiculously expensive. I hope you guys have found this little walkthrough helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And if you enjoy embroidery machines or sewing or even crafts, I'd welcome you to join me here on The Sewing Report by subscribing. I do videos. I try to do them at least once a week and it could be on a, any number of topics, but I've been really trying to give you guys some love in the embroidery corner because I know those videos have been very popular. Anyways, I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.